Hello everyone. We are here today to speak about all the changing we have been facing. But most of all, we would like to give you solution for the art and design industry and ideas about trends that we have identified. So I am here today with Gabor Yuvari. Gabor is a co-owner of Artorigo, a selling platform that not only can give exposure in the States, but also in Europe where it is already strongly operative. And also with John Wolf of John Wolf Art Advisory and Brokerage. And um, my name is uh, Fabienne Kozulic. I am uh, a co-owner of Kozulic Interiors and Antiques. We have a retail showroom in the New York Design Center specialized in Italian design with also a contemporary customizable collection in furniture, lighting, and decorative accessories. So thank you for joining us. And don't hesitate to write your question in the chat or Q&A box. We will answer to them. And don't hesitate to reach out also to us individually if you have specific questions or needs. So Gabor, I would like to ask you first, since you are very present in online, the changing that you have been experienced and also the solution that you are presenting to the art and design industry. Uh, what I see the past 10, 15 years, internet is taking over more and more galleries in the industry buying, selling and trading online. After COVID-19, of course, we have to change the rules and we have to learn how to deal in the future. I strongly believe that we don't have to be disappointed. We don't have to worry about business. We have to focus on refining our business plan for 2020 and 2021 for next year. And we have to make sure we can get new customers. We can keep our current customers buying, selling, trading online. With Arturigo, we try to help to the industry. That's why we decided a Swift, a Swift after COVID-19 taking over um, since March, that usually we have uh, memberships on Art Origo and uh, we decided that we propose a free membership to new members to join us until the very first sale. And when they start selling, they have two options to choose, buy a membership and don't pay us commission or pay us commission and stay membership free. We strongly believe this kind of idea will help the galleries and inter designers to be visible on the internet, showing their collection, even manufactured products, contemporary pieces, vintage and antiques. And also we believe that social media is became more important as a marketing tool and selling tool than ever. Especially I'm talking about YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. You can show your collection online, making effort to represent yourself with beautiful pictures and videos. On Arturigo, you can also show videos about your products under furniture, lighting, fine art, and decorative objects as main categories. And also you can show videos about your gallery, your workshop, your exhibitions under events and projects. We have a section for short videos like on Instagram. We also help a jumpstart for new members because we are proposing an automatic product sync. The automatic product sync is basically we establish a connection between your products on your website and we are duplicating your available items uh, to your Art Origo store. When the sync is successful, we run the sync daily. And if you upload new items or delete or modify existing items, it will be the same on the next day. We save you tremendous time and effort posting items on numerous platforms. I believe that COVID-19, we have to see the positive and the good things and we don't have to be disappointed. Uh, what we have to do is strictly build up a brand new business plan. 
I also believe that brick and mortar stores are important. It's not going away 100% because your store, even you can receive clients by appointment only, is your Pandora box where you can meet your clients when you, they, they can physically inspect uh, your collection. You can have a coffee or a glass of champagne and close the deal and go deeper in details and share your secrets. But I strongly believe that internet is the future. Video is an excellent tool to promote your products. Uh, social media, as I mentioned, is more important than ever. And um, we hope that in a couple of years from now, Arturigo will be a marketplace, a meeting point like a big square for designers, decorators, and art and design galleries. They can share, buy, and trade projects. They can cooperate. They can go and uh, upload um, floor plans and asking our dealers to, to cooperate, refurnishing a home or a restaurant. This is really great to hear about all of that. And you, John, I would like to hear from you. Uh, we know how the art scene has evolved, even in uh, an extraordinary way, because even with people not going to galleries, there has been a tremendous interest around art. So tell us about everything you've discovered and about you too, if you have innovations and solutions yeah. for us. Yeah. Well, I think one of the most interesting um, phenomenons that we're seeing is a lot of people obviously at home more. So they're working from home, they're in their space and they're staring at their wall and they're like, wow, my space is ugly. I need to redo it. You know, they're, they're, you know, interior design work is full speed ahead. And so is the art, the art world. You know, I'm watching people on Zoom and I'm seeing what's behind them and, and noticing, um, you know, a very lacking experience from a video perspective. So there's a I lot of opportunity. Thank you, ladies, anyway. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing them over. Yes. <laughs> and maybe halfway through, I'll change so, to give you another view. Um, but yeah, so there's so much opportunity online because there is, um, you know, obviously there's, there's so much content out there, but what I'm finding is people really need to see almost a curated selection first because it's the, the, um, opportunities are endless. So, you know, creating that customized website like Art of Rico, um, where you can see like really curated options to purchase. Um, helps so much. And um, because if you delve into a site like Artsy, you would just get overwhelmed. You know, it's kind of like going to an art fair in person. Um, it's great when clients, when I have a new client and they're like, hey, should I go to an art fair with you? I'm like, sure, because I know once they get there, they'll get overwhelmed and they'll be like, okay, you handle all this because it's too much for me, you know? So that's where as a designer or dealer, you really have the opportunity to um, engage more with people now because you have to, right? You're not seeing them in person. So you're picking up the phone, you're sending them video, you're engaging online. So I think it's a great opportunity to shake up your business and, and be more innovative. And <clears throat> excuse me. And that's, that's what I'm finding. Um, I just curated a show, an online exhibition for a gallery space here in LA and promoting it globally and everybody globally can see it. They don't have to feel pressure to go see it in person because they can't, it's only online. And so it's um, in the work, I think the artists are um, responding to this online phenomenon so much more and creating work that's a lot more visually um, uh, graphic. Uh, when I say graphic, I mean almost like um, graphic design, you know, how graphic design is, is all about the digital. So the paintings uh, specifically have more of a um, graphic feel to them, kind of like these. So they, they show digitally online, very true to what they look like in person, you know? So that's, that's a trend. I can go on and on, but I will, I will pass the baton to, to make our discussion more focused. Uh, so, uh, in a way, uh, and uh, what you're saying, John, also mirror uh, our experience, because in a way, 
you are uh, outlining the fact that uh, the online experience has a uh, um, very positive aspect that uh, even an in-person visit would not have, right? Yeah, and, um, and that's something one of our um, attendees just asked, Stephen, asking, you know, how do we offer trips or in this case, a virtual trip? And yeah, great question. So doing almost like a virtual studio visit, FaceTiming with artists, um, doing a Zoom meeting where I can show you, you know, works uh, via, via this. Um, I did have a, you know, virtual, or I did have a in real life exhibition at my residence here in the Hollywood Hills and invited people over. Maybe only 10 out of 30 that were invited came, you know, so you see a drop off, but people still came. Um, and yeah, that's something I offer. I do, I do buying trips for, for clients and, and designers where I'll go out with them and make recommendations and show them things. Um, and I do that virtually. Yeah. So again, exactly. I believe that there's been so many challenging um, times that have forced us to come up with great ideas. And in fact, when we were speaking together last time, we could all only be positive and see such a bright feature because it's so exciting to realize that uh, uh, it's really um, a challenging time, but a time where great ideas are coming. And not only, but as I said, John, your experience, it's a little bit our experience too, that uh, several of our customers, even if it seems that brick mortar um, needs to have visit, suddenly we have opened the doors to tools that have enabled us to reach out to our customer in a completely new way. Like for example, we have a 3D um, tour of our gallery and uh, people really can uh, even go back to it several times, uh, even in the middle of the night, when usually we wouldn't be open in the middle of the night. So, and uh, from their comfort, they can see whatever they wish, they can stop, they then look, they can ask us. And um, the, this is a fantastic tool. And this also has enabled us to have even better relationship with our customer. We have realized that this time, also because it has brought us more together and because we have been feeling, I think we had a lot of the same feelings, but we have been able to find ways to listen more to our customer, to focus more on their needs and on providing them with extraordinary experiences. And I think this is also extraordinary for the future. Um, they have so many doors that have opened to make the user experience uh, uh, more comfortable for our clientele, more uh, uh, down to the point, to their own needs. And not only, but through that experience, in the end, they even know us better because they see that we are next to them. They see that uh, we want to uh, answer to their individual needs. And uh, also, this, because we have been listening a lot to our uh, clients, uh, we have intensified our customizable collection because we realize that people being more at home, they want to renovate their homes, but more and more they want their home to speak about themselves. So they love the idea to have personalized um, furniture pieces, personalized lighting, which is in a way like the choice of a painting. 
I believe that the choice of art is very individual. And so for us to intensify the possibility to have personalized furniture, it's extremely important. And in fact, we'll be uh, launching in September a new line with uh, um, interesting stones and materials, but everything will be uh, customizable to the need of the client. So we have discovered really um, a way to be even more near our clients. Don't you think so? Yes. Absolutely. And Gabor also, through your support uh, of bringing the community together, I think that uh, this uh, allows many people to open new doors to online sales, so to more exposure. So really, we were saying when we spoke together, we were saying that we have realized that uh, uh, everything is good here. We can have better relationships with uh, our clientele. We have uh, more authenticity, more uh, diversity, uh, and uh, we have more focus in listening to the needs around us. And uh, also, um, and this event show that we are also um, going towards more partnership. Absolutely. And I have a really, really good advice. If you want to keep your old customers and gain new customers during these times, uh, what we do differently now is cold calling and direct mails are not really helpful these times because they are very annoying. People receive tremendous calls and emails because of COVID-19. Everybody wants to keep the communication up with emails and phone calls. And based on my experience, people fed up and they got too many emails on the mailbox. So they start signing off on newsletters and emails. They don't pick up the phone anymore. So my strong advice is if you want to gain new clients and keep your old ones, put a lot of effort on social media, post interesting pictures and videos about your gallery, about your daily life, going to the workshop, checking on a furniture polishing or the carpentry or changing a fabric. Show to your customers that from A to Z, you are doing a professional job. When you go out for a shopping trip, and you buy a furniture in bad condition, release a video, this is how it looks like. Then put it on the workshop, make a video, how to make your restoration. And finally in your store, they see the beautifully restored piece. You have to create social media stories about yourself, about your business, post short but interesting videos. Never go too far because nobody is watching a five minute video about a furniture. Make it like 30 second, bam. And trust me, videos are branding yourself more than ever. And you will realize that you don't have to call clients and email clients anymore. They are going to contact you because they like your stories, your videos. We have to make it pro and personal. And this is, I think, is the future. I, I totally agree, Gabor, totally agree. And in fact, I think that social media today help us to um, make our clientele better know us, better understand us and following us so that they see all the several aspects of our business and they can- yes. Yes. Honestly, I tell you, when we started events and projects on Artorigo, I was a little bit of scared, like how we can fill up this section with videos and pictures. But after one year, we have like 2000 videos from Basel, from Tifa, from Brafa, from workshops to exhibitions. And now we started designer portfolio and it's growing slowly, of course. We cannot be Instagram who have billions of videos about things, but we strictly focus on art related videos and the idea is working. And, and it's just beautiful to see something. Uh, I remember uh, 
Amy Lau, uh, famous friend and designer in New York, gave us the credit last year. She said what she likes on Arthur Ego when she's sitting in a cab in New York in a traffic. She goes to Arthur Ego events and projects and she feels like she's traveling in time to Florence and Milan to Paris to London. Just watching the videos in the, in the cab is a wonderful way to travel virtually with us. And that was a exactly. huge compliment. Thank you, Amy. Exactly. And John, by the way, thank you so much for changing your background yes. with other art. <laughs> and uh, uh, I believe that uh, beauty is uh, what uh, will uh, be the right solution. Uh, and I believe that this time have allowed us to turn more and more to beauty. So beauty is for sure the overall solution. We, we speak about solution here, but I think that, wow, John, thank you. you. And, and, and now John is doing a virtual tour for us. He's already doing what I'm saying. He's doing a virtual tour. That's fantastic. Exactly, lovely. This is fantastic. So uh, we are uh, speaking about solution here, but I think that uh, beauty in the end and being able to take uh, our customer with us, uh, uh, those are the most beautiful solutions. So I uh, uh, think that we have uh, uh, answer to most of the question, but uh, there is uh, another question for you, John, uh, and I believe another anyway. John, uh, um, we wanted uh, to know uh, how the uh, social issue have affected uh, the art market uh, lately. Yeah, great question. So there was already a very um, needed trend in the art world prior to, to all of this, where artists of color were getting a lot of accolades and a lot more attention and a lot more um, commercial market power, seeing very high auction prices, very uh, kind of clamoring for the work, which was excellent. And there was a lot of debate among um, kind of dealers like, is this a trend? Is it going to stick around? And now what we're seeing with the, um, the protests is that absolutely it's going to stick around and it's um, more important than ever. So, um, you know, so many artists of color are getting attention. Artists from, uh, you know, different identities standpoint, LGBTQ, trans, non-binary, um, and just artists from other countries that aren't in the mainstream art world of New York, LA, London, are, are getting noticed and uh, it's, it's much, and because of things like Instagram, they're getting discovered. So you might have an artist uh, in Ghana who's just wildly talented uh, getting picked up by somebody like myself and, and putting in an exhibition. Um, so it's really exciting times for artists and for the collector, important to know that importance and also um, to, you know, select wisely um, and, um, and consider their collection to be, um, you know, understand the artist behind what the work that they're buying. Excellent. And um, uh, I have a question here for interiors. They're asking me, do you believe that brick and mortar stores uh, or gallery will be replaced by 100 online shopping experience? Uh, that's a great question. Well, uh, I don't think uh, that uh, this is the end uh, of uh, brick and mortar stores, not at all. Not Bri at all. Exactly. Brick and mortar stores are like, uh, um, like uh, a heart, you know, they are a center. And I believe that we must use them where uh, we get together, where we offer diversify the user experiences. Of course, the online experience is developing and we have to be uh, omnichannel uh, present for sure. And, but that's what's fantastic about that because um, yeah. we choose uh, online selling platforms and uh, there are several around. So. We, and in fact, I think there is a question for you about selling platforms, but uh, 
we also can use uh, this uh, heart uh, to um, even if uh, we have team, for example, that can work uh, from home. But I believe that a brick and mortar is uh, um, like a the beating part of uh, our business. And uh, we uh, will always, um, in the end, uh, that is just another way, as important as a selling platform, another way to weave a better relationship with our customers. And your, and your shop is always your Pandora box with lots of secrets you cannot share online. So I think to have like a studio apartment gallery by invitation only, or you invite friends to your home to show art, or you go to your shop is always important. And it's never going away because this is the place when you drink your coffee and you smell and you taste your coffee with the client and you close the deal or you show them secrets. So brick and mortar store are Pandora box for me. And we have to go there. So I think it's never going out of business or out of fashion. Oh my God, this is a wonderful piece, John. And I just wanted to say, John, because uh, we spoke that before, that you are also invited to join us with your collection. We're, I'm gonna do it this week. Thank you. And uh, Gabor, there is a question for you. Well, yes. um, um, the question is how Arthur Rigo differentiates uh, uh, itself from uh, First Dibs and other similar companies? Oh, good question. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to be solid with this answer because you know, Fabian, that I created First Dibs International for Mike Bruno on a sales perspective between 2011 and 15. So I created and sold over 600 accounts for Michael in 14 countries in Europe. And Michael was my mentor, still a great friend. We talk like monthly. So if I have to answer this question that everybody knows that First Dips is the big bear, the big company for art and design, Michael started 20 years ago. And after Michael, was not with First Dips anymore in 2015. Then we saw growing marketplaces like Incollect, Dicasso, Cherish, Pamono in Germany, and so, so many. And that was created a competition. But my vision with Arthur Ego is, I don't want to be number 15 on the line, doing exactly the same business like other platforms. I try to be different. That's why we have the video, the sync, the automatic posting tools and the video tools, because um, you have to make it interesting uh, to generate attention from consigners like gallery members and designers. And also my idea is to put everybody under one umbrella, buyers, sellers, decorators, designers, because I want Arturi Go to be seen in a couple of years from now as a marketplace like a meeting square, like a communication platform. When a designer can post a floor plan and say, hey guys, I'm refining a lake house in uh, Lake Geneva. This is the floor plan. It has to be Danish design. Please help me. And maybe the members on Arturigo can propose inventory to the designers to, so they can start communication through Arturigo. So we try to be like a communication platform and the marketing platform as well, not only a selling tool. We want to be like a meeting point when you can share your ideas, your floor plan, your new developments, your manufactured pieces and looking for a distributor, for example. I love the idea on Arturigo that uh, in a way, the designer are uh, nearly uh, on the same uh, platform as and on the same level as uh, um, gallery owners uh, and retailers. And, and, and it's no competition because, uh, because they are working together, but they are doing a completely different thing like a gallery. So they can help each other, supply each other, go to the project together. And uh, I don't see competition here. No, no, you're right. And John, uh, did you see the question for you? Oh. There is a question. Yes, it's the uh, question. Ask, uh, 
I'm, I'm very pleased because there are really very, very uh, nice questions here with extremely good content. So, John, as an appraiser of art for insurance coverage, what is your advice to make an examination of an art piece when a site visit is not possible, even at a long distance? Sure, great question. So, um, if you're appraising it just for value and not for damage or conservation, then that can definitely be done virtually. Um, you might only need to make sure that it exists, right, by seeing something like this. And then, you know, just with the image and the artist's name and, and the information on it, you can easily determine a value. Um, I do that all the time for, for clients. Do you uh, have the pieces turn around always? Do, do you always no. turn the back? No, not necessarily. No, if, if you know, there's a lot of trust, you know, with their insurance company, uh, you know, agrees that, oh, yep, they own this piece, it's in their own, then I'll trust that, that uh, it's, it's real. <laughs> I have asked this question just because us, uh, as our background is to be antique dealer, and you know, one, one of the big points in assessing the age of a, a piece of furniture, you always have to inspect. Oh, I'm sure. So that's with why. furniture, it's probably much more difficult. I can't imagine. And with artists, you know, at least there's like a history of that artist selling and, and it's a little more traceable, right? Um, because yeah, it's just a different animal, right? Yeah. Okay, so I believe uh, that we also have answered uh, all the question. Uh, anyway, if uh, any, we've missed anything, we will for sure. Um, let me see if there is, uh, uh, oh, there is another question. How about a damage and a loss appraiser, like uh, a crack or a repair to the back? Yeah, that's a great question. So. Um, there are miracle workers out there in the conservation space who can fix a painting. You know, the famous story of Steve Wynn, who, you know, his elbow went through the Picasso. In that case, maybe that Picasso is worth more because it was Steve Wynn and there's a story behind it. But typically, um, the unfortunate thing with repairs to paintings, um, you know, the ethical thing is to then notate that when you go to sell it, that, hey, this painting has been, been conserved or restored. And then there would be a condition report highlighting how and why. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of times that can affect the value. Some, some true collectors don't want it because, they, because it's been restored. However, um, that's uh, you know, kind of up to you as far as, you know, if it's a painting you love, it can be restored to where you can't even tell there was damage, great you know, hang, keep it hanging on your wall. So it's kind of a case by case situation if that answers the question, because now that I'm speaking, I forgot the question. <laughs> you know, the question was about uh, uh, damage and loss appraisal. Uh -huh. uh, question from uh, Nancy Wilcox, and uh, I, uh, um, I'm sure that Nancy can reach out directly to you, John, also if she needs uh, uh, sure. no more about uh, uh, the the answer in case uh, yeah. uh, she has uh, other details she was uh, thinking of. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I uh, I think that uh, uh, we are here. Uh, uh, we have covered all the questions. I think also that uh, it was extremely interesting to hear uh, our. Uh, different discoveries and I from what uh, we have been discussing I only see a very bright future I only see even uh, more friendship because I'm sure that only helps uh, again our relationship not just between uh, clients and dealers or retailers but even between us because uh, this for sure has been a lesson where we need to help each other, understand each other, and speak more between each other. Not only uh, to uh, give a, a better support to our customer, but to enjoy better our friendship and our relationship. 
So I thank you very, very much. Unless, You're welcome. And, and uh, would you like to add something? Um, I just would like to add like a final sentence. Uh, internet is kind of like the French airplane, the Concorde before. Because when the Concorde airplane was operating, you were able to celebrate three New Year's evening at the same time on the same night from Tokyo to Paris to New York, if you have enough money to buy this ticket. And I believe that internet now is the Concorde of the art world because I'm sitting in outside Budapest at Lake Balaton. You're sitting in New York. John is in West Hollywood. And we can celebrate together art and design and friendship at the same time. So for me, internet is the concord of design and concord of solution to keep in touch and celebrate in multiple places at the same time and do business. And not only, but John has offered us a fantastic tour. So what- Thank you. Ask for, we couldn't ask for more, right? Yeah. We had a tour, a gallery tour. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Gabor. But uh, Thank any, you. if anyone has uh, some additional question, we, all of us, uh, we are uh, ready to be here for uh, whoever would like to ask us um, for uh, details of support or uh, uh, professional assistance. So Lovely. Thank you, thank you again. Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the night, Gabor. It's uh, night. Thank you. Soon. Thank you so, so much. Thank it's you. been great. And uh, thank you for your trust and your friendship. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. And see you soon. Bye bye. Bye, bye. bye, John. Hey, Fabian. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.